Well, this evening we come to a section of the story that, as I mentioned last week, is not moreover centered on the journey of the pilgrims themselves. It's not moreover centered on Christian and hopeful uh, per se. But their discussion of another pilgrim whose name was Little Faith and his experience within his pilgrimage, within Little Faith's pilgrimage. But before the story of Little Faith comes to the scene, our pilgrims do briefly cross paths with two different individuals, one named Ignorance and the other one named Turn Away. Uh, Bunyan tells us that as they were going down the mountains, down the delectable mountains along the highway toward the city, a short distance away from them, there was a little crooked lane that led into the way. So they're, they're going down the way and there's this little crooked lane that comes off and it comes into the way and it comes from the country of conceit. And it was from that crooked lane that appeared a very spirited lad named Ignorance. And the reason Ignorance was very spirited is because he had a vain confidence in self. He was conceited as the name of the country that he was from is named. Ignorance claimed to know the Lord's will. In their conversation we read that he's lived a good life. He doesn't owe anyone anything. He prays. He fasts. He gives offerings. And because of that, he claims to be on the way to the celestial city just as them. But as Christian points out to him, the problem is that he didn't go through the narrow gate. He, he hasn't come to Christ. He's trusting in himself and what he has done to, to earn his way into the gates. He has sought to come into the way on his own terms through the little crooked lane to the side, not through the narrow gate. So regardless of what ignorance thinks of himself, when the day of judgment comes, uh, he will be seen, as Christian would tell him, as a thief and a robber instead of getting admittance into the city. Well, of course, ignorance is, is like many in our day today here in the Bible Belt that we find ourselves living in, claiming to be right with God, claiming to be Christian, all the while trusting in themselves and, and really just rejecting the rule of their professed Lord. Because their ultimate authority is themselves and not ultimately Scripture, they will not have this Bible talk at all, and they are readily content with it to really just cease from existence. They don't really want to, you know, they, they got it. They know what they're doing. I know what I've done. I know I'm a good person. I know uh, how I got on the way, just as you did, so we, we don't need to discuss this. So, gentlemen, replied ignorance, uh, you're absolute strangers to me. I don't know you. Be content to follow the religion of our country, and or of your country, and I will follow that of mine. Uh, I hope all will be well with you as we uh, both walk this way in our, in our own way. And as Christian saw that the man was wise in his own eyes, he quotes to hopeful Proverbs 26, 12, saying, uh, there's more hope for a fool than him. Well, I think it wouldn't have been necessarily wrong to speak more into the conversation with this ignorant one. Christian and Hopeful decide to let him pass by and essentially chew on the truth that he has already received from them, chew on the truth that they have uh, given to them for a time, and then try to talk with him again uh, a, a little later to maybe give a little more to him, which we'll see that uh, a few lessons from now. So they both go on, leaving ignorance with the truth that they, that they gave him, that, you know, that he... Uh, they are sure from God's word that he'll be seen as a thief and a robber, that you, you didn't go in through the narrow gate, and so forth. But they both go on. Ignorance follows behind them. And they begin to enter a very dark lane where they met a man whom seven evil spirits had bound with seven strong cords and who was being carried by them to the door the pilgrim saw on the side of the hill. Uh, you remember, you were with us last week, I think we were all here last week, yeah. Um, you remember that door on the side of the hill was an entrance to hell uh, for hypocrites. Uh, those who sought to appear to be something that they were actually not. To appear to be Christian on the outside, but actually weren't Christian on the inside. Uh, such as, as Judas, who appeared to walk with the Lord, but inside just sought to, to serve self and his own desires and wants. So this man that they saw being carried by these seven evil spirits with seven strong cords... 
uh, this man's name was Turnaway, and he was from the town of Apostasy. And we've covered this before, but apostasy is when someone who once professed uh, belief in the gospel firmly accepts the faith uh, to follow Christ. They then turn away from that profession uh, that they once uh, you know, outwardly held to, to reject the Christ that they once professed to trust in and serve. And the imagery here is a mix of a teaching from our Lord in Matthew 12, verse 43 to uh, 45, and, uh, and Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. Matthew 12, Jesus tells us that when an unclean spirit goes out of a person after a time, it seeks to go back. And though the life may be swept, cleaned, and put in order, right, though the house is swept up and cleaned, and right, the bad stuff is uh, essentially by, by all sight gone, uh, if it is empty and the presence of God is not filling that life, then that unclean spirit will then bring seven more with him, and the last state of that person will actually be worse than the first. Yeah, it got clean, but it, it, it wasn't filled uh, with truth. It wasn't filled with Christ. Uh, this person who does such a thing will actually be filled with more wickedness because to clean up a life, uh, even with the words of Christ, but with no true heart trust in Christ to follow him and, and of course his presence the presence of the spirit of God there in the life to serve our creator uh, that is to simply strengthen the worship of yourself that is simply to strengthen the worship of your own ability and really further hardens you in you living sinfully for self look, look what I can do on my own without my creator uh, the last state of that person the Lord says uh, Peter would agree uh, is worse than the first. As Proverbs 5.22 says, The iniquities of the wicked ensnared him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. The iniquities of the wicked, the sin of the wicked, ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. So though this man professed Christianity and trust in Christ, it was not out of love for Christ. It was not out of love for his gospel. Uh, at its core, it was out of love for self and a longing for self-preservation and whatever came from that and how he specifically lived that out. Uh, but his love for self, just as this will do to anyone else, his love for self ultimately led him to hell uh, and instead of to the presence of Christ, his creator, um, to the praise of his glorious grace. And as they pass by him, as they pass by, turn away and seeing the scene of these seven spirits bringing him with these seven cords uh, ensnared by his sin. Hopeful looked after him and saw on his back a paper with this inscription that said, Wanton Professor and Damnable Apostate. Wanton Professor and Damnable Apostate. This man uh, loved his sin. This man loved his sin and not Christ. He saw this on his back but we read that he did not see his face, uh, as Bunyan would tell us, because he held his head, turn away held his head like a captured thief, uh, which he was. Essentially, he was a captured thief, shown to be who he truly was, taken to be where he justly deserves, just as we all justly deserve because of our sin. But as he would uh, go into hell as someone who had sinned against his creator and not been clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And it's after these two encounters that are really familiar in others, other encounters that we've seen thus far in this book. That's why I'm not taking a whole lot of time on them. We've, we've seen these similar types of encounters. We've seen uh, apostasy. We've seen uh, ignorant people trusting in themselves, thinking that they're on the way uh, in accordance with their own good works. We've seen these in the book thus far. It, it's after these two encounters that the story of little faith is given. And I believe what we have here from the story is... Essentially, Bunyan, very pastorally, seeking to encourage weak Christians from despair in the midst of the awful things that are seen and heard from ignorant people and from hypocrites and from apostates. Um, it can happen that we can see these horrible representations of Christianity around us and uh, in, in moments of vulnerability or in moments of having little faith, we can be brought to despair in seeing these things. Uh, one could begin to wonder in, in the midst of seeing all these 
horrible representations of Christianity, ignorant people, uh, uh, turnaways in, in our life, one could be, begin to wonder something along the lines of, if, if this is what it just ends up looking like with, with ignorant people and turnaways, uh, what am I even doing? Uh, why am I even doing this? Or as well, man, if this guy, if this girl that, that, that I knew uh, faithfully served the Lord looked like a Christian to me, I mean, think of uh, Judas serving the Lord for three years and the other disciples, Lord, it's not me, is it? Is it? I mean, they, they never would have assumed that it was Judas. So we can think, man, if, if this person is a hypocrite and left the faith, how can I know that I won't leave the faith either? How can I know I will endure to see my Lord? That person looks so sure that they would endure. Well, Bunyan gives us this story to take our eyes off of self and to put it on the God of all grace who through the knowledge of the preciousness of Christ keeps even those who are of little faith. Christian begins in telling hopeful of what he had been told concerning what happened to a good man, he states. I think we know what he means by saying that. We understand no one is good, but he's clothed with the righteousness of Christ. He's seeking to serve the Lord in accordance with his word. What had been told concerning what happened to a good man from around where they were, his name was Little Faith, and he was from the town of Sincere, who chanced to sit down in the same area they were in, and actually he fell asleep. Bunyan tells us that nearby there was another lane called Dead Man's Lane that came down from Broadway Gate, where killings had been very common. And it was near the entrance of this lane that Little Faith had fell down and slept. And as little Faith was waking up from his sleep and seeking to head on his way, there were three brothers whose names were Faint Heart, Mistrust, and Guilt, who happened to be coming through the lane on horseback and quickly came upon little Faith in his estate. Immediately, they ordered him to stand with threatening language, and Faint Heart ordered him to hand over his money. Little Faith was slow in doing so, so Mistrust ran up to him and thrust his hand into his pocket, taking out his bag of silver. Little Faith cried out, Thieves! Thieves! Then Guilt, who had a large club in his hand, struck Little Faith on the head and knocked him flat on the ground. Little Faith led there bleeding, as though he may bleed to death. But finally... Upon hearing someone coming, someone that they didn't know who it was, but being afraid that this one coming may have been a person named Great Grace from the city of good confidence, the thieves left little faith to fend for himself. And as Hopeful asked whether they took all of his possessions or not, Christian replies that they, they never ransacked where his jewels were, capital J. But as he was told... Little Faith was much afflicted because of his loss, because the thieves got most of his spending money. Though he retained his jewels and a little bit of money left, it was hardly enough to sustain him to the end of his journey, for he dared not to sell his jewels, so he was forced to beg as he went to keep himself alive the rest of his journey. And Christian tells us that he went about almost the rest of the way, uh, scattering about nothing but dismal and bitter complaints, also, he told everyone who passed him or who he passed in the way of where and how he was robbed, who they were who did it, what he lost, how he was wounded, and that he barely escaped with his life. This situation had affected Little Faith so much that it seemed to be all of what he talked about the rest of his journey and his pilgrimage. What we see here with Little Faith is a man who is a brother in the Lord, but a brother who is weaker in faith could mean that he's either weaker in knowledge of the faith as a whole, he's weaker in, in, in the faith that has been handed down to us in his knowledge of the faith, or it could mean someone who is spiritually weak and that while they do believe and, and find their all in Christ, they are more susceptible to being beaten down by different situations and circumstances in their life uh, than others who aren't as great grace of, from good confidence. We in the body of Christ who have different personalities and how things affect us 
There are those who are stronger in the faith than others. There are those who bear a hundredfold fruit in contrast to those who bear fruit and, and bear 30. Uh, that's not a justification for disobedience. That's just how it seems to be in, in some of our brothers' and sisters' lives. Because of certain sinful tendencies in our lives, some of us need more encouragement than really encouragement than, that we all could use. Um, and this is, this is this one little faith here who, uh, while I pray we don't live our entire life as he did, uh, that would be very depressing and, and I believe not God-honoring in, in very many ways. Uh, I think we can see something of ourself at different times in this one little faith. I know in reading it, I certainly can. Uh, this, this brother fell asleep in his walk with the Lord in a very deadly spot, right where the broad gate of the world merges into the way. And while he woke up to continue, because of his weakness of faith, he was immediately hit with a faintness of heart. Uh, no boldness. Uh, no resolve. Uh, his fears at this moment were more than his faith. Uh, this was followed by a mistrust in his heart. Uh, why am I even here? What am I doing? Uh, has Christ forgotten me? And he lost many of the marks and rewards of his acceptance before God, which obviously upon uh, having those experiences in the mind is going to lead to guilt for having those experiences. We have faint heart and then mistrust and then guilt. Uh, Robert McGuire, who wrote a commentary on Pilgrim's Progress, says, and I quote, uh, Whoso gives way to a faint heart in the pilgrimage will soon mistrust the comforts and promises of God, and ere long this will amount to guilt of soul and conscience, and all for littleness of faith. End quote. And so, he didn't lose his jewels, that's why I said capital J, he didn't lose his jewels, he didn't lose his faith in Christ, that can't be taken away. Uh, we're held in his hand. That can't be taken away. God keeps his people in the faith uh, by his sovereign hand. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God keeps his people and he continues to work in them a love for Christ to endure for his name's sake, regardless of our experiences, regardless of our uh, little faith moments. Uh, 2 Peter 2.9, Beloved, the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. He knows how to do that. We may not know how to do that, but he knows how to do that. Um, he certainly does know how to do that. He is faithful. He is wise. He is all-powerful to accomplish his plans in the lives of his own. And because of that, little faith would not have thought for a second to sell or pawn his jewels. But Bunyan rightly tells us that there would be nothing little faith could attain in this world that would truly relieve him. He wouldn't pawn or sell his jewels for anything. What, what would he do that for? Selling his jewels was never an option for him. He is not like Esau who would sell his birthright for a bowl of stew. Right? What, is, what is Christ, uh, or what is, a, what is a bowl of stew? What, what is something in this world compared to Christ? It's, it's nothing. One who has truly tasted and seen that the Lord is good, beloved, could never do that. But what we do see here is that this was still a situation, as I mentioned before, that little faith really never recovered from. He didn't lose his jewels, but he did lose most of his spending money. He didn't lose his faith, but he did lose most of his boldness. He did lose most of his assurance. He did lose most of his peace. He, he lost most of that which should really naturally be had and experienced because of the jewels that we possess as Christians. When Hopeful asked about his certificate, his assurance of faith, which would be a part of his jewels... Christian states that because of the anxiety little faith had in having his money taken away, he forgot a great deal. He forgot it. He forgot the certificate a great deal of his journey, but that when it did come into his mind to be comforted by it, that fresh thoughts then of his loss would then come upon him again. This whole experience would come back upon his mind, and those thoughts would really just swallow up everything. It would swallow up him remembering his certificate and his great assurance in Christ and so forth. Certainly this is one of the great benefits of Christian friendship, one of the great benefits of being joined to the church, because we do see that these thieves ran away as soon as they thought great grace was coming. As soon as they thought great grace was coming, they, they fled the scene. Great grace being one who is strong and, and in this moment confident in the faith. He's from the city of good confidence. 
They ran away when they thought another brother was coming to the aid of little faith. Certainly from the word of God, we would see that we are greatly used as a means by God in one another's lives to keep each other going, to, to spur one another on to love and good works, comforting one another, speaking the truth in love, praying for one another, lifting one another up that we may be made whole. Uh, we are greatly used by God to stir one another up to, to continue in the faith, to continue on the pilgrimage. Through the firm knowledge of those great jewels we have in Christ Jesus, beloved, our Lord has given his body much spending money, much spending money of confidence and assurance and peace to, uh, to pass around when our other members are lacking in their spending money. Uh, in light of the awful things that are seen and heard from ignorant people, hypocrites, apostates, that which, we can, uh, that which can come upon us in this fallen world, those who are weaker in faith or find themselves in a weak faith moment, beloved, can know for certain that they will endure to the end. And they will do so because God keeps his people in the faith and he uses his people in the midst of his people mightily in one another's lives to do so. To keep one another going. I beloved, his, his, his plans never fail whether we're in a little faith moment or not. Ignorant people and turn aways may be doing one thing but we're, we're doing a totally different one. Because God is for God and in that God is utterly for his people. And as those who are to imitate him, we are to be as well. We are to be for God and we are to be for his people. So, of course, in as much as is in our ability, we're not going to have those around us here, uh, here amongst our fellowship, who continue as little faith did in the rest of his way, in, in, in bitterness and dismay. Certainly circumstances affect us in this fallen world, but beloved, there, there is true joy in the Lord. There is true joy in the creator of our world that can be had in the midst of anything that comes by his word and spirit in the fellowship of his people. As we encourage one another and we spur one another on speaking the truth in love, praying for one another to lift one another up. And though there are those who are weaker and those who are stronger, that doesn't mean that the strong aren't just, you know, not susceptible to being overcome by these thieves at times as well. Uh, they're not, you know, bulletproof. Bunyan mentions Peter who would strut arrogantly, but he was so handled by faint heart, mistrust, and guilt that he became afraid of a servant girl in denying the Lord. Well, actually, be looking at that this, this Lord's Day. Beloved, those who strut arrogantly may appear to be great grace, but they are a little faith in those moments. Certainly it's very easy to be great grace in the mind until a situation occurs where you must act upon it and actually live out that great grace that you were so sure of in your mind. Christian tells Hopeful that if we were to even look upon the face of great grace, we will see those scars and cuts that will easily demonstrate that we can all be susceptible to this. For even Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, that they were so utterly burdened beyond their strength that they despaired of life itself. But that that was to make them rely on God who raises the dead and not to rely on themselves. Beloved, we're not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, Romans 12, 3. We're not to rely on self or to rely on God. We're not to think more highly of ourselves, beloved, because we're all weak, needy creatures who are always in the need of, of the grace of God. At, at, at every millisecond of every moment, we are always in need of God's sufficient grace to, to fuel our obedience unto Him. And it is only in that mindset where we do stand up as a champion of great grace, finding our confidence in the amazing person of Christ and His truth and not Himself. So as Christian further brings about concerning the man little faith to hopeful, our response to hearing of brothers and sisters uh, failing to these enemies, failing to faint heart and mistrust and guilt, uh, that should not bring us to brag as if we could have done better than they in that, in that moment. Uh, nor should it bring us to be amused at the thoughts of our own manhood. Because it is when we start to trust in and think highly of self 
that we step into that realm of little faith. Because certainly pride comes before a fall, uh, just as we see ultimately turn away who fell, who completely trusted himself and never had faith to begin with. Christian tells Hopeful that in light of hearing of such things, it should move us to go out and be equipped at all times. Speaking of being firm in the truth of God's Word, being, being one who is praying without ceasing, constantly being dependent upon God and His Word and His grace. For even the Apostle Paul, who had great skill, Bunyan would tell us, commanded us to take up the shield of faith. Paul had, had great skill, but he knew, he knew even from his own experience that you need to take up the shield of faith. Christian tells Hopeful as well that it is good that we desire of the king to give us an escort, speaking of the Holy Spirit, speaking of being dependent upon our God and his, his ever presence with us as, as we go out and live the life that he has ordained us to live. Just how David could walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil whatsoever. How, how, can, how can you do this? Because... Because certainly David is so awesome and great. No. David would say, I can do this and fear no evil because you are with me. Knowing, knowing the one with us. Knowing the one who cannot be stopped. Knowing the one whose love cannot be taken away from us. Knowing the one who upholds the universe by the word of his power uh, is with us. Knowing the one who, who equips us for that which he calls us to do. Who has equipped us to walk through that valley is with us and will see us through. Uh, that is what our mind needs to be set on, that is the one that we need. And again, just as, just as Christian brings these truths to Hopeful, being the one to, to relay this message to Hopeful, may we be reminded that we need one another, as has already been brought up, uh, that we need one another to bring these truths to us, that God would use them to keep us in the faith in the midst of anything. And as we as we look at this section and we see little faith and, and how great grace, even the thought of great grace, was used uh, in his life. May we be mightily used in each other's lives to that end, uh, handing out, spending money when need be. For my part, said Christian, I've been in the fray before now. And yet, as you see, I'm alive through the goodness of him who is best. Yet I can't boast of my manhood. I'll be glad if I don't meet with any more onslaughts, though I fear we haven't gotten beyond all danger. However, since the lion and the bear have not as yet devoured me, I hope God will also deliver us from the next uncircumcised Philistine. And Christian saying, Poor little faith has been among the thieves, was robbed. Remember this, who so believes and gets more faith shall then a victor be over 10,000, else scarce over three. So they went on, and ignorance followed. And next week, we will see them come in contact with the flatterers who the shepherds warned them about. But until then, we'll, we'll, we'll just be covering that whole section of where they meet uh, the first flatterer, and then the second one in meeting a, uh, atheist. Uh, but until then, this would that, that concludes our lesson for this evening. Um, and apart from any comments or questions, we can begin the review.